Um, how are you? Uh, this is Terta Morogoro, um, Basuku Nyabenda. Welcome again to our session. Today we are going to do the last part of Three Sweet as One Husband uh, from the topic Reading Literary Work. Yes, I hope you have been enjoying a lot uh, from the day when I started Three Sweet as One Husband. Uh, which uh, is written by the playwright Golam Oyonobia. Yes, um, today uh, we are going to finish the thematic analysis analysis of the play Three Sweaters. Okay, uh, now I'm going to start with tradition and family. Tradition and family. Uh, with this one here, we start with respect. How uh, how people in the society, in the Mutesi village, of course, which is uh, a typical representation of other villages of typical African, Afri African societies, how respect was gained in that society, how people were respected in that society. You come to realize that first, uh, children were supposed to respect their parents. That uh, is one. Children were supposed to, uh, to respect their parents. And of course, if a child uh, failed to respect the, uh, the, the parent, father, or mother, or any other elder, uh, he, was, he or she was supposed to be punished. You can see what, uh, what, what the, comment, uh, the comment that was made by Abesolo uh, when Juliet uh, seemed to uh, misbehave or not decide to, to respect uh, her, her father, Atangana. That uh, Abesolo says, uh, you should beat uh, your daughters. They should be beaten simply because they fail to respect the parents. You see, uh, with this one here, uh, you see uh, that children always were supposed to respect their parents. Of course, even today, we expect the child and the children to respect their parents. Uh, the second thing is uh, women were supposed to respect their husbands as well. Women were supposed to respect, to show respect. To their husbands. And of course, in the same way, uh, Abesoro comments that uh, women should be beaten, and just like the way it takes place with the, uh, the, the children, especially daughters, should be beaten uh, so that they keep respect to their husbands. And so, um, in African societies, we, we expect the women to respect their husbands, not only in the uh, in, the, in the books, eh, but that's the reality. You see, uh, uh, though we may differ in the, in the with, with the Besoro's ideas, but at least we expected that that children, uh, women respected uh, the father of the house. Yes, another thing is uh, the bride price, as we saw, the bride price was the measurement of the value of woman. That is in African society that. Uh, a girl uh, uh, whom the higher bride price, uh, the bride price, higher bride price is paid for, is the one who uh, received much respect compared to others, and that's why you can say that a girl who went to school and whose bride price will be uh, very high is highly respected. You see, uh, another thing is men with many wives. Many with many wives were respected much compared to those others with one wife. And of course, you have to remember that a man with one wife uh, was not respected that much. That's why uh, was turned into a laughing stock. Yeah, a good example is Atangana. But uh, Atangana was a, a laughing stock in the village simply because instead of ta uh, taking other wives, he decided to spend the money on educating her daughter, Juliet. And so you can see that uh, the respect of man in African societies uh, is when you have more than one wife. And of course, even today, as I say in the previous sessions, uh, it is still happening that when a man gets more money, thinks, uh, he thinks of adding more wives, and which is illogical, of course. It is, not a, uh, it is not something sensible, but at least it's happening. And it was happening also, also in that Votesi uh, village. Uh, people respected the heads of the village, yes. As it is today that we respect the leaders, the government officials, we respect them. Even in Votesi village, the head of the village was very, very respected. You still remember how Mbaga was taken. That 
uh, whenever he decided things, whenever he advised things, uh, um, then they were taken as a command. Uh, we can say in the normal language, we say the wishes of the leader was the command to the, uh, to the commoners. And so you can see how that was. And government workers were respected as well. Government workers were respected as well. You can see how uh, uh, Mr. Mia is taken when he goes to the village, that he's highly respected, he's highly respected uh, because he works, from the, he works in the government. And even when they were bargaining or when they were discussing on marriage setting as far as uh, Juliet is concerned, you can see that uh, they were taking that title. He is a civil servant. Uh, by, by saying that, it shows that they were respecting him much because he was the government, one of the government officials. So that is uh, that's how respect was gained in the uh, Butesi village or uh, in that society. Yes. Now let's go to marriage setting. Let's see how marriage was uh, was in that society. You know, we, we have various ways of marriage setting in our societies. But let's check how marriage was in that. How was it taken? How was it set and how was it taken in general? The marriage. You see, firstly, you find that the amount of blind price was the measurement of amount of love. The amount of bride price that you pay uh, for a girl was the measurement of the amount of love that you have in your heart. It's different somehow um, uh, with, with us right here in our uh, modern world. We believe that. Uh, money uh, is not the measurement of love, but in that society, Mutesi village, be they, they believe that uh, the amount of money that you pay uh, is the amount of love. So if you pay a little, uh, that means that you didn't love that person that much. But if you pay more, that shows that uh, your love is greater. Uh, that's why you can see that, for example, Mbia. Uh, Mbia pays 200 francs. And the whole village believes that uh, that is a deep love uh, he's having with Juliet. Though it might be not the reality, but that's how it was counted. You see, otherwise, many women mistreated the uh, relatives who visited them in town. You see, uh, if you remember one of the scenarios is when Matarina, uh, or when, 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 when uh, Makrita, uh, Juliet's mother, uh, says that when we come to visit you in the town, you shouldn't uh, chase us away only after three weeks. Uh, that shows that uh, people had the tendency of visiting their uh, daughters who were married in town and they would like to stay longer and longer. So to them, three weeks was a short time. They should be left to stay more than that. You see, and so uh, it seems that uh, when they visited those uh, daughters in, in the town, there was a tendency of chasing them away, taking them go back to your village. And that's why uh, we see that we say, okay, that women, uh, the married women were mistreating their relatives who visited them in town. I hope it is not happening in our society that when your relatives from the village visit you, you are chasing them away by saying that the food is not enough, the budget and the like. I hope it is not happening in our society. It was just happening in Futesi village. You have the answer. I'm not the one with the answers. You see, another thing is uh, young men in rural areas. Young men in rural areas preferred less educated uh, girls than those who went to school. Mm -hmm. the, the, the young boys in the village, those who were ready, who were, who were, who were ready to, uh, who were matured enough to get married, did not prefer those girls who went to uh, school. They preferred those who were less educated. And there was a reason behind that one. It's because they believed, just like Abesoro, they believed a girl who went to school uh, was not well disciplined. Uh, and so they wanted uh, obedient girls, the yes wives. The yes wives. I hope when I say the yes wives, you get my point right here. Uh, it is like uh, the, the, a, a woman or a wife who would not challenge, who would not challenge, who would not uh, oppose the, uh, the, the husband. Uh, those are the uh, those are the women who were preferred by the young uh, the young men in the rural areas. Not uh, not the, 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 the women of Juliet uh, type. 
but the, the women are of, of Matarina type who didn't go far in education because they are going to be submissive, they are going to be obedient, they are not going to challenge, they are not going to oppose the, their husbands. That was the preference of the boys or the young men in the rural area. You see, otherwise, uh, some married women use the fetishes, you see, that is in marriage. That is the marriage. That uh, the, the married, the married uh, women were, uh, were were sometimes uh, using fetishes. These charms, uh, charms, the the black magic from black magic uh, to, uh, to 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 win the love of their uh, husbands. That's what happened. Uh, so sometimes they use that one to win the love of their uh, husbands. That's how it happened. I don't know if it is happening in our societies. I hope it is not there. Though I sometimes hear people saying that uh, that man is bewitched by the uh, is bewitched by the, the wife. That's why he is very very uh, cool. Very has no he cannot mix with the other uh, with the other men. He has no ideas and the right is because maybe the wife has done something on him. Of course, they believe, they believe, but I don't know if it is real because I have never witnessed one. But it was happening in Mutesi. You still remember that example from Mbaga uh, when, 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 um, uh, when Sangatiti said that some of the things Mbaga, uh, some of the things were bad to Mbaga, or Mbaga was facing some unfortunate uh, and some, some, some simply because some of the wives he married from other tribes were. Uh, somehow using strong fetishes or strong traditional medicines uh, to weaken him. And so that was happening in marriage. Yes, in the same case, when we talk about marriage, it uh, was a social issue, not a personal matter. Eh? You see, uh, I don't know whether you get to my point here. Marriage in that village, marriage in the typical African societies was a social matter not a personal issue. What does it mean? It means that, uh, it means that uh, to get married, the decision was made by the whole society. In other words, a girl wants to get married, the society was the one to decide whether that man is right or wrong. It was not just the matter of meeting somewhere in the street, you love each other, and then you decided to, to announce marriage. No, it was in that case, as it is happening nowadays. You know, nowadays we are having marriages which have no grounds to stand on. Nowadays, you find that uh, this man has just completed, uh, this young man has completed university education. Uh, now he is having a new, he is new and employed, living in a certain room somewhere or so in. And then we have this girl who also is living somewhere. And so they meet in a, in a house where they rent their rooms. They just love each other from nowhere and then the marriage is set. That was not the case in Mutesi village. In Mutesi village you had no that opportunity. Because the society, the whole village was decide whether that man is right for you or not. The whole society, the whole family was deciding whether that woman is right for you or not. That's what happened to Juliet. That's why I found that when Juliet came back from school, uh, she was not allowed to show love to someone else except those who were accepted by the family, especially Mr. Beer. Yo, so you have seen that it was not a personal matter, it was a social matter. You see, uh, sweet as we would. Sweet as with, uh, with, with good financial positions, eh, were preferred. If your, your pocket was big enough, you had a way. Your financial position is sound, is vibrant, then you, were, you could be accepted anyhow, regardless even of your age. Eh, whether you are, you are almost dying or you are still very young, provided that your pocket is, uh, is alarming, you are, your pocket. Uh, is inviting, uh, then you could be accepted as a, a sweeter and sweeter. You see, uh, that's what happened. That if Mbia, who was having, who was already having seven wives, simply because he was having this big, big, big pocket, uh, yes, he was accepted as a sweeter and sweeter. Mm. Mecca, who was the deputy uh, secretary, 
of the saint was also accepted. He was having 12 wives. It is simply because he was having money. So, uh, if well, those with the financial, with the financial positions were accepted, uh, were preferred eh, by the society. Otherwise, related people were not allowed to marry each other. Related people. What do we mean by related people? Uh, you know, we, we, in Africa, we still have extended families. We still have extended families. Now, with extended families, uh, you mean that we are, I'm having a grandfather and grandmother. I'm having uncle, aunt, cousins, and so many others. But sometimes, we are somehow far related. Now, see what happened, for example, when Mia was asked about uh, his origin, when he mentioned, Mbaga said, it is not possible to have a marriage between Mbia and Juliet simply because the mother of Juliet is from Yemon tribe, the clan Yemon. Mbia's, uh, Mbia's grandmother, grandmother, remember it? Juliet's mother is from Yembong clan. Mia's grandmother is from Yembong clan. With that, that point, they were not supposed to get married. Can you see how far it was? That these two are from, uh, are very far in relationship. But simply because uh, the, the mother and the grandmother comes from Yembong clan, then they are not supposed to get married. That is how it was. They are not even bloody related, but simply because there is a relationship in the clan, somewhere in the clan line, somewhere, then they are not supposed to get married. That is Africa. That was typical African society. You see, another, the, 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 the last part is people with more than one wives were respected. I have already said this when we were discussing uh, some things back there. We said people with more than one wife were respected. Yes. Also, Women were not involved in the discussion on marriage matters. You know, remember, try to, to think of this one here. That um, uh, women were the concerned when it comes to marriage. For example, girls. Let's take an example of Juliet. Who was concerned? They affected with what was going on. But she was not supposed to be concerned. As far as marriage setting is concerned. She was not supposed to be concerted. She was supposed to accept everything that is decided by the men somewhere there. Otherwise, parents were reluctant to allow their daughters to get married uh, by men from far. Parents were not in a position to allow their daughters to get married to men from very far. Let's say you say, uh, we live in Morogoro and then uh, my daughter gets uh, a suitor from Sumbawanga or a suitor from Kagera, from Kigoma, from uh, somewhere very far, Mafia and the like. And I could say, no, that is not possible. That's very far. And it happened when, uh, when Juliet asked me, where does Oko come from? When Oko mentioned, when, 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 when Juliet mentioned the, the place where Oko comes from, they said, hey, that is very far. That is very far. And I remember Juliet challenging the mother, saying, okay, where are you coming from this village? No, I was coming from very far. And then, why do you want me not to get married to a person from afar? So, uh, that was uh, how the parents were treating their daughters in that way. Yes, now let's go to love. How is love portrayed in the story? How is love portrayed in this story in the play? Love is sure that uh, mm, love of man to woman was measured by the amount of blind price. I've already mentioned that one. I'm not to go into it again. Girls were not allowed to fall in love. I said this once again, very, very, very far. Girls were not supposed to, were not having permission to fall in love. We are not allowed to fall in love without the permission of the family. So the family were supposed to give permission for her to love someone. I don't know how this happened, but it was happening. Yes, it was happening. And you can see that Juliet was not supposed to make, to love, was not allowed to love Oko. And she was supposed to love, uh, to love 
mere on the before. So we, girls were not supposed to show love. And they were supposed to be uh, to get permission from the parents. Uh, maybe uh, this is very this is very very strange. Uh, maybe I, I don't know if it is still happening today in our society that your parents can can give permission for a girl to love. I don't know. Maybe you you will be having your own discussions with your fellows. You will come up with the answers. You see, the young generation believe the young generation believe the worth uh, or money had nothing to do with genuine. Love. You see, now we are having this young uh, generation. Uh, the, the Kouma, Oko, Juliet are good representatives of the young generation in this story. They didn't believe in money as the sign of love, but genuine love uh, from the bottom of the heart. So someone of the, of the bottom of the heart, someone could prove that this person is in love. You see, uh, but this is from the modern generation, the new generation who are represented by Oko, Koma, and Juliet in the story. That they believe a person can fall in love with or without money, with or without wealth. Different from what the forefathers, Abesoros, Atanganas, Onduas, Mezoes believed. Yes. Otherwise, in the same case, Sangatiti said women use the fetishes to win uh, love. You see, so what we are told here is that uh, as far as love is portrayed in that story, fetish has a position to play, has a part to play in maintaining love. That's according to the story. A good example is how Sangatiti says how women we are uh, trying to use fetishes to win the love of Mr. Banda and other men as well. Love is also portrayed in this story when Atangana, the way Atangana showed love to her daughter by taking her to school, by educating her, by using all the costs, all the money he was accumulating from cocoa production, uh, was using to educate her daughter, Juliet. That was true love from the father. Just like the way your parents are doing, uh, using all the resources they have. Some of them have turned even into a laughing stock uh, where you are living because they are spending a lot of money sending you to school. You should believe that one. Another love is portrayed or displayed in the story uh, the way Oko loved the jury so much that he even joined the her fight for love. You see, Oko had a true love. Now, to prove this one here, he even decided to join Juliet in fighting for their love. Even when he, he knew that the money was stolen from, the, the, from father, he didn't neglect to join Juliet. He accepted to take the money so that to go and pay it as a bride price. Remember, they were very young, they were still in the school. But to show that she, he had a true love to Juliet, he accepted all the regime to make sure that they uh, uh, on the case of love. The other case is on polygamy. Polygamy. The way it is, uh, the way it was, uh, the, the way it was, or the way it is portrayed as story, uh, polygamy was accepted practice in many women in Syria. No, no uh, polygamy was an accepted, an accepted practice in African society accepted practice. It wasn't a, uh, a criminal case. It wasn't illegal. It was accepted. It was officially accepted. And of course, this one uh, was used to make the women inferior. Because if a man can accumulate a number of women, 12 women, eh, that shows that it is an inferior race. Huh? You see, educated girls had the privilege of becoming rulers in polygamy families. You see what? You can see the case with Mbia. Mbia was having seven wives. But among those seven wives, no one has gone to secondary school. And so, Juliet, who had at least attended secondary school, was expected to become a ruler in that family simply because he was, she was having a secondary education. So, being educated was a privilege to a girl who goes to, who goes to get married 
into a polygamy family. Because the respect to her could be high compared to those uneducated ones. Other thing is, having many wives was a status in Mutesi society. I think I have already talked about this and I don't need to explain more about that one. Many who married many wives faced problems in, in G mother. Yes, uh, example, example, mother. Many who married many wives faced some problems. That was another case. They faced some problems because those women were using fetishes. Uh, maybe you should uh, observe these things in uh, a, a, a different case. You have to focus and try to see very far uh, that if you are planning to become a polygamist, try to think more about this one here so that you are not going to turn into mother's life. Yes, now I'm finishing with that one. Let's try to check the, uh, you know, you know, we have discussed a lot in the three sweaters one husband, but remember, among these traditional practices we have discussed, it is not all bad. We have positive traditional practices and negative traditional practices. Some traditional practices are supposed to be maintained, are supposed to be preserved. We should go on with them. Others are very bad. We have to avoid, we have to eliminate, we have to abolish those others. Now, I have selected a few, just a few of them. From these few, you can add others as you read that book. I insist you have to read this book. Don't just rely on my notes. Don't just rely on, uh, on, my, uh, on this video. You have to read the book itself so that you get more information. You see, it's just a summary. Now let's try to check the positive traditional practices which should be maintained, which should be preserved, which should continue in our societies, our modern society, and see the negative practice which should be abolished, avoided, and eliminated. Yes. The negative traditional practices. Why? Preventing related couples not to get married, that was very bad. Unless it is a brand relationship. Unless it is very close relationship. This should be observed. If it is not a very, very close relationship, leave people get married, please. They are in love. Fail to do that one, you are causing psychological torture. You are causing psychological torture, which can cause physical torture. I have already witnessed the people who get who decided to, to, to commit suicide take their own lives simply because they have, uh, they have been rejected. Their love has been rejected by the society. So if the people are not very closely related, please leave them get married. Let, let them get married. Don't just be an obstacle. Don't be a, a stubborn broker which can cause uh, uh, more harm, uh, more, more harm than, than, than good to these couples. Okay. Another thing is Preventing young men and women to eat certain kind of food. This is food taboos. Food taboos. That, to me, that's illogical. And there is no way you, you say this food is only for men and this is for women and this is uh, not, uh, young men should not eat unless they are permitted. Now, that's not. That's not fair. That's selfishness. That's kind of selfishness. And I have heard of this kind, even today, in today's modern that uh, when a chicken is slaughtered, uh, a father is having a certain part of meat and a young man cannot touch it, a girl cannot touch it, a woman cannot touch it. It's only the father who is allowed to eat that one. That's not fair. That's selfishness now. Huh? I think we should stop that one. You saw what happened? When Beringa and Yowono, those young men decided to take uh, some vipers meat. Mezoe advised that they should be put on the ground and get a very, very sound beating because they have eaten a taboo animal. That is wrong. That's wrong. I told you the other day that I remember when I was growing up as a young, uh, young uh, 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 as a child, I could see that my grandmother was not eating sheep meat. And the other meat she was not eating. And I didn't know the reason. I thought it was like that. But it was because it was a taboo to her. 
You see, and I witnessed some of the women who could not eat eggs. And I don't know why. But many were just eating. That's a protein food, yeah? Why, why do you take that very, very important part of the food, the one you say is for men? And the other one, which is just a uh, normal part, which is sometimes weak, you say it is for women. That is unfair. That's a, that is superiority and inferiority in the society. You should stop that one. Rejecting women's freedom of speech, that is another bad practice, negative practice which should be stopped. How can you expect a normal human being not to express her ideas, her opinions? And sometimes you find that the issue touches the, the person herself. For example, marriage. That, take an example of Juliet. Juliet is getting married. And because he, he uh, she is the center of the event. She is the center of the occasion. The center of marriage. The one who is supposed to get married. But she's not supposed to be converted. Do you think that is fair? That cannot be fair. That's unfair. That is degrading a person. That is undermining a person. That's oppressing, suppressing. It shouldn't be like that. Women should be given the opportunity to express their ideas. They are normal human beings. They have brains. They have thinking. They have their thoughts they need to present. They have their opinions, ideas. And sometimes very positive and stronger. Uh, stronger, stronger than stronger than those which could be presented by men sometimes. Why don't you? We have very, very good examples of our leaders who are, they are, they are women, they are good leaders compared to men sometimes. So don't, don't enslave the women. Let them speak their mind. Let them speak their opinions. Let them say what they have. Share what they have. At least by using their opinions, we can go very forward. We can go, uh, we can make uh, our, 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 our nation go. Another practice which was very bad is oppressing women. This is bad behavior. This is negative. This is uh, a very, very bad practice which is, how, how do you beat your normal, your, 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 your um, you are fellow human being like that, like an animal. Nowadays, even an animal is not supposed to be beaten like that. We are having people who are fighting for animal rights. Now, if, 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 if animals are not supposed to be beaten, how do you beat a wife, a daughter, like an animal? That's the unfair. It should be stopped. It was happening, and that's why I'm so confident he says, you should beat your wives and treat your daughters just the same way. That shows the beating was going on. And even today, I said in the, other, in, the other, in the previous sessions, that even today we still have some societies where women are beaten, sometimes to death. That's unfair. Choosing sweaters for girls without consulting them. Please, this is another bad tradition which we should stop. You cannot choose a husband for someone. You cannot choose a suit. Of course, as a parent, you have a position to give advice. You have a par as a parent, you have a position to give to share your opinions on that sweater, but not to decide. I think the only position you can have is giving opinion, suggesting, giving advice, saying this is bad, this is wrong. Uh, this is good. I think you should do this. I think you should decide. I think you should observe carefully if this is the right money for you, but not deciding. That is wrong. Because that is her life. It is not your life. Yes. The use of witch doctors in solving problems. This is totally, completely wrong. This is totally wrong. This is completely wrong. You cannot use witch, uh, use witch doctors to find solutions for your problems. No, that is not, that is wrong. You see what was happening now in that village, Mutesi village? 
uh, when the money is stolen, they decide to find this Angatit, uh, the witch doctor, to solve their problem. Did he manage? The answer is not. Instead, he was trying to cheat. He was trying to lie, to rob money from them. And I have seen this, it is happening even in our society. Many people, when they face problems, any problem, they think the witch doctor is the solution. They end up fighting in their own families. Because the witch doctor will come and try to say, Oh, you are uncle is a bad person. Oh, you are aunt is a bad person. You are grandmother is a bad person. Is the one who is facing Then, when the witch doctor goes away, you start fighting among the family members. That's very wrong. That's very, very wrong. So, uh, forget about these witch doctors. Work hard, solve your problems in a different way. Sit around the table, discuss your matters instead of visiting these people. You have someone who is sick, take him to or her to hospital. If you believe in religion, take him or her to the religious leaders if you think it is a solution, but not these witch doctors. You are going to, to kill yourselves. Now let's try to check the positive practices. We have some positive practices. First, parenting, teaching good morals to their children. That is good. That in those days we are having these people, we are having the parents who could sit with their children and teach them the good morals. Now this is somewhat bad nowadays. It is not happening that much. We are having this problem where in, uh, 12 months of the year, a parent has not come in contact with the children. That you are having your daughter, but as a mother, you have never come across, you have never got a time to sit with your daughter discussing some matters. You are a child. You have never found a time to sit with your parents to discuss some family matters or social matters. As a child, you have no time to sit with your father to discuss family matters, social matters. And that's why we are having a lot of indiscipline cases in schools, simply because you children are not having time with your parents. You are not given the dosage of disciplinary matters at all. The father is very busy, the mother is very busy, and you are very busy with the TV, computer, and other things. And sometimes you are having a phone, though you have hidden it, your parent doesn't even know. But at least you have enough time with the other people outside. You don't have enough time with your parents. As a result, you see what's happening, you are misbehaving. But in those days, the parents were responsible to teach the children on the good ways. You know, it doesn't make sense that a child is having good history, is having good history about uh, uh, other countries, about some people in other countries, in other continents. You have a lot to say about Obama. You have a lot to say about uh, uh, Gantt. You have a lot to say about uh, uh, maybe Vladimir Putin. You have a lot to say about these very famous people outside there. But you, you know nothing about your grandfather. You don't know, you don't know anything about your great grandfather. You don't know anything uh, about, 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 about your, your family origin. That's very, very illogical. No, this makes sense. You need to know your, your people first. You need to know your family. You need to know your grandmother, your grandfather. What was they, what were they doing? What, what were they doing? How, how did you come to your existence? How, how did you come to where you are right now? You need to know that one. Because by knowing your past, it will be easy for you to build your future. But you have no time with your parents. That's why it is like that. So, parents teaching good morals to their young ones will be a good move, which can take us somewhere positive. Sweeters helping the in-laws. You see now, 
As it happened right here in the first point, you see how Juliet was being taught by mother on good morals, not to speak again, uh, not to argue with the father and the right. The same thing comes now, you come to the second point. Sweeters helping the in-laws. Huh? That you, you saw what Ndi did. Ndi helped Makrita with the family. Helped Makrita with the family. So we find that uh, uh, this is good that even today we expect that the sweeters to have a good contribution to the in-laws. Not just sit there and enjoy. See? Another thing is young boys to stay with the elders. I have already talked when I was talking about it. I have been taught a good morals by the elders. Young boys should sit with their elders and learn on how to run the family. Yes, you know, uh, in those days we are having, even today, some, some tribes right here in Tanzania, we are having Jado and Nyabo, and that's very good. The, that initiation ceremonies are very good because at least they prepare a young man and a young girl uh, to, uh, to, for, for marriage. Uh, for marriage life. Now, this should take place even today. That as a young boy, you need to have time with your father. As a young girl, you need to have a, a time with your mother or your father as well. So that you are taught some things which are very good. See, punishing young people who misbehave, that is very, very good. If a young person misbehave, should be punished severely so that you don't go back to that mistake. You don't go back to that mistake. You should be punished. And don't take it negative. When you are punished, it's because your parent loves you so much. By doing so, you will change. You will follow the right track. You will be in the right road. And in the future, you are going to be a good citizen. You are going to be a good person for the family. And you will depend on you. That's very good. Now, what message do we get from all this? The message that we get from all this is that we should preserve all good practices from our traditions and leave behind and abolish all those bad traditional practices. That's the very strong message we have. Now, having finished about those ones, let's go to disappointment. This is a theme, this is another theme which is, uh, which is discussed in the story. You know what, sometimes uh, the characters in the story fail in disappointment. And of course we have seen that even in this story some characters fail uh, in disappointment. One is Oyono. Oyono uh, fell in disappointment or is disappointed when uh, Juliet refused to marry Ndi Ombia. He fell in disappointment simply because Oyono was expecting that bride price so that he pays to her, his own love, a loved girl in Ebola. He fell simply because Juliet fails to get or refused to get married to Mbia or Ndi. Another disappointment is when Juliet is disappointed when uh, she finds out that parents have already taken a bride price from, uh, from two suitors. You see, uh, uh, this was another disappointment. And another disappointment is when Atangana is disappointed when the money uh, went, uh, when, when money go missing. That's another disappointment. Uh, which uh, we face, or which we see, or which is portrayed, which is shown in the story. Atangana find out that the money well, uh, was missing. Yes, another disappointment is when Ndi, uh, Ndi is disappointed when he is told to add bride price because he knows that after uh, paying a hundred uh, thousand francs, that was enough. But all of a sudden, he is told to add another hundred thousand franc, francs, which is a total disappointment. That was another disappointment. Another thing is, elders, elders are, are disappointed when this young man, Owono and Biringa, decided to steal some of the viper. It 
it was a total disappointment to the elders. Another one is the villagers are disappointed when they discover that the lies of Sangatiti. That was another disappointment when the villagers uh, find out that uh, the witch doctor, Sangatiti, is just lying to them. That was a disappointment. The other part is Matarina is disappointed when Juliet refused to marry Bea. You know, she was having high expectations that uh, Juliet could not turn down that offer of getting married to a civil servant with big money from San Merima City. But Juliet says not to that one, and so Matarina was disappointed. The last but one, Juliet's relatives were disappointed uh, when that trader again say, uh, turned, uh, turns the offer down by not paying 300,000 francs as a bright price to Juliet. They expected a lot when she said, he said, no, I'm not going to pay this for just a, uh, just for a girl. And so they just uh, get disappointed. And the last one, Atangara is also disappointed when Makrita delayed to cook for him after returning home late from far. That is another disappointment, disappointment which Atangara faces uh, in this story. You know, there are so many disappointments, uh, so many disappointments in the story. You just need to read, you just need to read that story so that you get to know other disappointments which are found. Yes, and the message you get from here is that people should not have higher hopes Eh? High expectations, or should not give promises which they cannot eh, fulfill. Eh? That people should avoid promising a lot. Should, people should avoid it, having high expectations or higher hopes because, in the end, they can find themselves in disappointment as it happened to those people we see uh, in the story. Having finished about disappointment, now let's go to the part of awareness, at least about awareness, you know, the self-awareness. When we read these stories, uh, we come to realize some people who are having self-awareness or self-conscious and those others who are at least ignorant in various matters. In this story, we have some people who are having awareness in various aspects. For example, Juliet was aware that she was a valuable human being and that's why uh, she was fighting for her rights. She realized that she was a valuable human being. She was having some rights. So uh, she, she shows self-awareness uh, to uh, her status. Okay. Abesoro was aware of effects of formal education and that's why uh, he was against schooling girls. He was aware that uh, school were, uh, the schools were destroying the children, were corrupting the children. That is the awareness of Abesoro. And also, Chegen was aware that Atangana wanted to exploit him when he demanded 300,000 francs. Chegen was aware, and that's why he couldn't pay that amount. that Ndi was aware of, uh, was aware that for him to get his or her rights, he had to report the case to the police. You see, that is self-awareness. Because if he was not aware, maybe he could fall in fight, he could fail in fight. But he didn't do that one. He didn't do that one. He was self-aware that if I report this case to the police, it will be solved. And so, uh, this shows that Ndi was aware. Also, Koma was aware that Sangatiti wasn't a really witch doctor. But uh, remember, the spelling here, witch doctor, not witch doctor, witch doctor, but a liar. And so, we find that uh, Koma was uh, one of the people who were aware that they were being uh, robbed of money, or where they were being cheated, they were being, uh, they were being lied to. And that's why he decided to fight to, to start a movement against uh, Sangatit, the witch doctor. Yeah. Another one, or the last one, is the movement of Mutesi village were aware that Sangatit was just a liar. So they came to their senses and realized that this witch doctor is just a liar. See, that is all about awareness. The other one is on irresponsibility. We are having two people here which give us uh, an example of irresponsible people in the society. 
First thing is Ondua. Ondua was just a responsible father and a husband because um, he spent all, all the time drinking in study of supporting his wife with family. That is some that shows irresponsibility. Another one is the Atangana was a responsible husband because he left all the farm work to his wife Makrita. That's another thing which shows irresponsibility. I hope we don't have those people. The other day I told you that nowadays uh, we, we hear that some men have decided to put aside their duties and responsibility to responsibilities to the wives. That we are having wives who are working very hard to get to aim something for the family while the men are just sitting enjoying the air. And that's very bad. That's very bad. The other thing is the confidence. Confidence. We have some people who have displayed confidence in that story. One of them is Mbaga, who was a confident leader. Mbaga was a very, very confident leader because even when other people were afraid of Mbia, he was not. He showed the confidence in him. And we need such strong leaders. We need such strong leaders that uh, we need a, a, a leader who can stand and show uh, his strength that uh, even when other people, when, even when outside and say this and that, he stand and say, I don't do this one because of your uh, decisions. I have this strong, uh, this person, this is strong person stand. And you can see Mbaga was one of those leaders, very confident. Even when others, even when the whole world was saying this and that, he could stand and say no to this. That was Mbaga, a very confident leader. Juliet was a confident girl. Even when the whole village lived behind the family, the whole village was supporting Bia alone. She stood and said no to this marriage. And at the end, she managed. She was the winner. And we need such girls. We don't need girls who are just submissive to anything. We need confident girls who can challenge the system, especially when it goes wrong. That's good. Koma was a confident young, young man. Koma was a very confident young man. That even when the whole village accepted all the lies which Sangatitu was telling the villagers, he said no to those lies. And at the end, he managed to change, to turn the waves, and the whole village went against Sangatitu, the witch doctor. Those are the people we need. Those are kind of the people we need. Oko was a confident young man. Even if he was a stranger in that village, even if he was just a schoolboy, he had no money from poor family. Still, he decided to fight the fight of her fiancé and at the end they won the war. Those are kind of people we need. That if you love someone, you can stand fearlessly and strong to defend what you believe is yours. Those are the people we need. Belinda and Yowono were confident. They knew that it was just a lie to say that with young, men, young, young men are not allowed to eat this kind of food. It was a lie to show their confidence. They went and stole the, 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 the meat and ate it. That's very good. So that's being confident. Ndi was confident as well. Though he knew that he was very poor, he was not having that very big money, but at least he managed to defend, to ask for, uh, for his rights by asking back for his refund, for refunding of his money that was taken as a bright price. That was good. Now what message do we get from here? The message we get from here is that uh, people who are confident can solve their personal, their personal problems or problems of others. If you are confident, uh, then it is very easy for you to solve your own problems and solve others' problems. If you are the opposite of it, you are coward, you cannot do anything. Instead, you will lead the society to uh, into danger. Now, uh, before we finish, let's talk about the coming of uh, the, the, the whites, the coming of the whites. No, the coming of the whites in our society was having negative and positive effects. Was having positive and negative effects. The coming of the whites. Now you can see that uh, with the positive effects, firstly, 
uh, the coming of whites introduced cash crops. You see that uh, now in Vutesi village, people were very busy uh, in, uh, with the cocoa production. Uh, Mr. Tangana being one of those. And so uh, by doing so, uh, they got money and like, so the whites brought uh, cash crops. Also, they introduced the formal education. You can see we have people who have gone to school like uh, Juliet and Oko. It's because of the coming of the whites. Also, these people simplified means of transport and communications. You can see that they introduced cars. As you can see, Mia from San Benima City to Mutesi village, he used a car. That was the effect of the coming of the whites. Otherwise, you could walk on foot all that distance. Creation of new job opportunities. You can say, you see that uh, people were now employed in uh, Sangmerima City. There were some uh, other, uh, the, we, we had people like Medora, uh, the police commissioner. Uh, they were employed because that was the system introduced by the whites. Yes, also introduction of hospitals. Uh, if you remember in the story, uh, mother who was sick sometimes uh, claimed that he had he only visited the hospitals, but uh, he does not get healed. Now, having hospitals was the effect of the whites. On the case of negative effects, and that will be, we are going to finish uh, with negative effects, uh, the formal education alienated the children from their uh, societies. That the children were taken away from their homes to get education. That was a negative effect because by doing so, sometimes uh, the girls and daughter, uh, girls and boys who went to school uh, uh, could at least uh, lose some of their traditional uh, traditional aspects, yeah, or traditional practices. That was uh, that's what happened when Judith came back. Uh, with some other ideas which were strange to the uh, to village. Yes, otherwise introduction of gun which could cause disaster. You see, the whites came with guns. Now you can see that in Vutesi village, every person was trying to secure a gun permit in Baga, uh, uh, we, we have Ondua, and other people who were trying to fight to get gun permits. But uh, with gun permits then, if people are having these guns, uh, you don't know what could happen in the village. Maybe we have witnessed all day, even in our modern society, people get in fight a little bit, then the gun is used, someone is killed. So uh, that was uh, some of a negative effect. The last one is introdu uh, intro they introduced the beer and the uh, wines. Now I find that uh, with these things here, people uh, continue to be drunk at. Uh, at least if they could say not this, it, they, it could help. But the people who need to be drunk and alcoholic and like we have so many undoers now, even today. We have so many people who drink and drink and then they don't care uh, what is happening. At least uh, this marked the end of the analysis of the book Three Sweaters, One Husband, the play Three Sweaters, One Husband. I hope you have enjoyed it a lot. I hope you have gained a lot. I hope you are going to use this material to answer your examination and to learn more things which can, can, could help you uh, in your life. It's not only about answering examination, but it's also about changing your life positively uh, as, as far as it is concerned. Thank you very much for watching or thank you very much for being with you in the, this whole process of analyzing this play, Three, three Sweet as One Husband. Next time, we are going to start the interview. It's a novel. The interview. So be with me when I deal with the interview by Patrick Ngugi. Thank you very much for watching. Have, enough, uh, have, have a nice time. And uh, please, we welcome you. Try to advise others to follow our link. Eteta Morogoro is the best among other online uh, teachings. Thank you very much.